God, I need more of your presence, God. I need more of your power, Lord. Would you give me strength? I can hide in the shadow of your wings. Hallelujah. soon will fade but I found my hope in you you are the one I want you are the one I need yeah this world can have it all it can take everything yeah give me Jesus give me not my home. Is that anybody's heart? I am just passing, I'm just passing through. through. Earthly treasures soon will fade, but I found my hope in you. You are the one. You are the one I want. You are the one I need. Yeah. This world, this world can have it all. Jesus, give me Jesus, the one who broke his shame and took away my shame. There is only one for me. Is that anybody's heart today? Lord, you are the only one we desire, Father, because you are mighty. You are my strong tower, Jesus. You are my refuge. You are my hiding place. And the only lasting thing is you, because you are forever. You are forever. You are the one that I run to. You are my treasure. You are my treasure, the only lasting king. You are forever. You are forever. You are forever. You are the one that I run to. You are the one that I run You are my treasure, Lord. You are my treasure. You See, are the others treasure. may say. You are my treasure. You are my treasure. You are my treasure. Heaven and earth will pass away. You are forever. You are forever, you are forever. Yeah! You are forever, Jesus. You are forever, Lord. Come on, somebody lift up your voice. Sing, give me Jesus. God, we lift up our voices. We give you the fruit of our lips today.
Who's believing the Lord for greater things this year? I said, who's believing the Lord for greater things this year? Hallelujah. Renew, restore, revive your church and make us whole. Ignite, transform, and take us to a place we've never seen before. Because you've done the impossible. We've seen our mountains move before. Your word is unstoppable. With expectation, we declare. Jesus, you're the God of greater things. Sing renew, renew, restore, revive your church and make us whole. Ignite, transform, take us to a place we've never seen before. Because you've done the impossible. We've seen our mountains move before. It's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. With expectation, we declare the mountains stand before. And no weapons, no weapons for. We're standing on your promise, Lord. We're standing on your promise. We're believing in your love. We believe in your love, Lord. See, we know. Somebody, are you ready for greater things this year? It might require greater consecration and greater sacrifice and greater devotion. Is there anybody willing to go into deep places? Is there anybody willing to go into deep places? Foundations are shaking. And every curse is breaking, and strongholds are falling, and greater things are coming. Foundations are shaking, and every curse is breaking. Strongholds, strongholds are falling, and greater things, and greater yeah. things are Sing coming. Foundations, foundations are shaking. And every curse, and every curse is breaking. Strongholds, strongholds are falling. And Come on, somebody, sing that again. Sing foundations, foundations are shaking. Are shaking. And every curse, and every curse is breaking. And strongholds, strongholds are falling. Are falling. And greater things, and greater yeah. things are Somebody lift up your voice. Stand before us. No weapons, no weapons for us. We're standing on your promise. We're standing on your promise. We're believing in your Lord. We're believing in your Lord for great And we know, we know that you are with. And we've seen, we've seen that you are with. Said, oh God, oh God, release your faith. We're believing in your Lord. Somebody, is there anybody with a cry, with the desperation in their spirit? Is there anybody with the desperation in your spirit? 
with a cry release in this house with a cry release in this house for the king of kings and the lord of lords the word of the lord says that he inhabits the praises of his people so where there is no praise there is no inhabitation there is no habitation where there is no praise foundations are shaking and every curse is breaking and strongholds are falling and greater things are coming foundations are shaking and every curse is breaking strongholds, strongholds they're falling are falling and greater things and greater are coming things are sing foundations foundation are shaking, are shaking and every curse and At the mention of your name, and every curse is breaking. I said, strongholds, strongholds are falling, and greater things, things are coming. Foundation, foundation, they are shaking, are shaking. And every curse, and every curse is breaking. Strongholds, strongholds they're falling. Are falling. in front of you. The Lord can move you at the mention of his name. We believe in you, Lord. We believe in you, Lord, Lord. And we know Hallelujah, somebody release a shot of praise. Come on, somebody. I know you may not be used to it. I know you may not be used to worshiping. Since March, you may not have worshiped. But the Lord is sending revival amongst his people. The Lord is sending revival amongst his people. God, we need you. We need you in this last hour. Let desperation arise in this house. Hallelujah. God, we need you in this place, Lord. We need you in this place, Lord. We need you in this place, God. Come on, somebody, everybody who's lowly in spirit. Would you lift up your hands if you're lowly in spirit? If you need God in your life. If you're battling the spirit of fear. If you're battling the spirit of anxiety. Everything changes in the presence of God. Things happen in the presence of the Lord. God, we need you. Would a cry arise in this place? Father, we need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Would you just lift up your hands and begin to, to talk to him? Say, God, I need you, Father. I haven't been where I've needed to be, Lord, but it changes from this moment on, God. I'm going to worship you. God, we need you in this place today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy, God. Yes, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. So I've come to meet you here. I'm better right here, I'm better right now, I give you all my fear, I 
lay them right here. I lay them down, and I put my trust in you. Yes, I put my hope in you. And I Is that your prayer? Sing, I've come. Yes, I've come to be you here. If I can just touch the hem of your garment, Lord. I'm better right, I'm better right here. here and I'm better right now. I'm better right There's no place I'd rather be than in your presence, God. I gave you all my feet. God, I want to experience you in ways that I haven't before, Lord. Touch my eyes that they would be open, God. I lay them See, I put my trust. I put my trust in you. Sing, I put my hope in you. I put my hope in you. Sing, I put my faith in you, Lord. I put my faith in you. Or for your glory. trust in you. I put my trust in you. I may have been putting it in other things, God, but today it's different. I put my hope. I put my hope in you. God, my faith doesn't come from my job or from my friends or my family. I put my it comes faith from you, Lord. in you. Oh, for your glory. For trust in you, God, and we put our hope in you, God, we put our faith in you, God, always, always, we put our trust in you, God, we put our hope in you, God, and we put our faith in you, God, sing always, always, always. sing we put our trust we put our trust in you, God, and we put our hope in you, God. We put our faith in you, Lord. We put our faith in you, God. Sing always, 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 always. Sing, we put our trust. We put our trust in you, God. We put our hope. We put our hope in we you, God. We put our faith in you, Lord. We put our faith in you, God. Sing always, always, always. put my trust in you I put my hope in you God I put my faith in you as I've grown deeper in my faith in the Lord I used to hear stories in the early 1900s where they would experience the God in ways I haven't seen yet where they would want to and desire to tarry in the presence of God for hours and I'm saddened in my spirit and in my heart that that's dissipated that there's no longer a craving and a desire to be in the presence of the Lord for hours when he's been such a good God I said he's been such a good God 2,000 years ago, he chose to die for me. A man that is wretched. A man that has guilt and shame, that has made decisions. 
that do not deserve to be in the presence of the Lord. But today I reverence God because he's good, because he's faithful, because he's just in all of his ways, because he's kind and I don't deserve it. Come on, sing, I put my trust. I put my trust in you. Sing, I put my hope in you, Lord. I put my hope in you. And I put my faith in you, God. I put my faith in you. For your glory. For your glory. If you love the Lord, would you give him a round of applause and just say thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are good, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is anybody happy to be in the presence of the Lord? With our family, amen. With our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. It is my privilege, it is my honor to turn over the rain, remainder of our service to our pastor, Pastor Arthur L. Diaz. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Thought it wasn't? That's why we're here. No better place to be than in the house of the Lord any day of the week. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. What a blessing we have. Amen. To be congregated together in one mind and one accord. Lifting up the name that is above every other name. Because it is at that name every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess to the glory of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Because he's the creator and he is the savior of this entire world and everybody in it. Can somebody say amen? Give the Lord a round of applause here today. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank him. We love him and we glorify his name. I'm so glad to see some folks I haven't seen in a while. I, I give God the honor and the glory because I've been praying for you. been praying for you and I'm glad you're here. That's all I got to say. God bless you. Amen. You're our honored guest for those that aren't, aren't, aren't regular uh, attendees or, or members of this church. Amen. But right now, without touching anybody, just turn around and just say hi to everybody around you. Tell them, God bless you. I see no mas. God bless you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. God is good. God is great and he is greatly to be praised. Some of you don't, don't I mean, you don't move, amen. I don't know, amen. I know we have social distancing. And make sure that you social distance and you use a mask and all that good stuff, amen, because, amen, people feel safer that way and that's all there is to it. Somebody say amen. That's it, man. I don't make up the rules, but nonetheless, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Is that okay? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Worship the Lord with me as we sing this song for the glory. If you tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. If you've tried everything and everything
Lord of Lord Jesus Christ, we give you all the honor, the glory, the praise, the majesty, and the thanksgiving. Where would we be if it were not for you coming, hallelujah, through our world one day and transforming us and making us into new creatures in Christ, in you, Almighty God? We wouldn't be here, but because you did, we're here today giving you all the honor, the glory, as we rapidly approach your soon coming. God Almighty, help us, Lord, to do what we're supposed to do and not to be distracted by the things going on around us, but help us to keep our focus on you, God Almighty, and your will and your purpose that you have for each and every one of us in our lives. God Almighty, hallelujah, so that we can be and we can do what you call us out of darkness into this marvelous light to do. Hallelujah, and that's to tell everybody about you and to share our testimony, God Almighty, for your honor and for your glory. Worship the Lord one more time, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. everything and everything failed until I gave my life to Jesus Christ and everything 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 if he hadn't given me anything else but salvation that's enough but he hasn't just given me salvation he's given me so many other things my my wife my family my everything my salvation everything praise the name of the Lord this church every one of you amen God be the honor and the glory. Can somebody say amen? Without any further delay, we want to get right into the word of the Lord. And, and we're so honored and glad to have, we've been, we've been having a good time. We had a district service here yesterday, and the Lord used our bishop, amen, our supervising bishop, amen, Jesse Rodriguez, amen, to uh, preach to us the word of the Lord. And we heard him in the meetings, and we also heard him in the, in the service, and, and man, the, right down the line, just exactly what we need to hear. And, uh, and I'm sure that today's no, no different. He, he, God used them in a mighty way in our Spanish service, and he's going to use them again. We're glad that his wife, Sister Luz Rodriguez, is also here with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Welcome, sister. And welcome, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. At this time, we have our supervising bishop of the East Los Angeles District, Brother Jesse Rodriguez. And he's also the pastor of the, in the New Life Apostolic Church in Orange. God bless you, Bishop, with us today. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. You know, some of you take uh, 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 the scripture very, very seriously, which you should. But when the Bible speaks about being princes and princesses, and uh, and, and I was I was watching some of you when. When uh, the brother that started the service says for you to greet somebody and, and just kind of wave, some of you took your job very seriously because you, you were going like, 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 like this. 
Like if you're like you're this 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 queen. I'm mean, not that you're not, but you you know. So I believe that we might as well begin to practice who we really are, and the world should know who we are. Because before long the trumpet is gonna sound. Uh, and you and I will be taken up to heaven. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I tell you, it feels good to be in the house of the Lord. And I am honored to be here. I want to thank God for, for my wife that is able to be with me today. I also want to thank Pastor Diaz and Sister Sylvia for the invitation they made us. It feels really good in this place. It really, really does, and hey, I'm so glad. I am so glad that I'm here. If I haven't seen you or you weren't here yesterday or you didn't watch our service online, let me just say this, Happy New Year. And I pray, I pray that this is a better year than last year. As a matter of fact, I'm going to prophesy and say, you will have a better year 2021 than you did in 2020. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pastor, I, I too remember Pastor, Pastor Hernandez. I, I still remember his teachings. I still remember his counsel. I was able to work with him in a couple of administrations, and he always taught us something, always taught us something. Even when he was quiet, he taught us something. So I think his memory will always live on. As long as you and I keep his memory alive, we are who we are. First, because of God, and because, and second, because of the men that God used to pour into our lives. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So I am blessed to be here today, and I believe I have a message for those of you that are still chucking along. Those of you that are still moving forward, I'm sure that you haven't gotten this far because there was no struggles in your life. I believe that you've gotten this far because the struggles in your life have made you stronger, have made you uh, a little bit less afraid. So, so today we congratulate you for being here. Today I'm going to ask you to please open up your Bibles to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. And some of you might be thinking he's probably going to speak from Acts 2.38. Because some of, some of us, that's the only verse we know, Acts 2.38. But we're going to go to the 20th chapter. The book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. And, and this verse, while you find it, talks about how Paul felt. After he took a look at his life and the struggles that he dealt with. And the things that he went through and the challenges that he faced. These are the words of Paul in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. This is what he says. However, however I consider my life worth nothing to me. After I go through all that mess that I went through and in my mind I relive it. I consider my life worth nothing to me. He says, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task, here's the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Paul is saying, I am going to use my adversity. I am going to use what's, uh, what, what opposed me to get to where I am today. I have set up a goal. So therefore, I don't care what happens to me. I've already set my mind on that goal. I consider my life worth nothing to me. I have a purpose. And my purpose is to finish my race and to fulfill the task that I received from Jesus Christ. 
So today's message or today's title will be Finishing Well. I want to finish well. Let us go before the Lord asking Him to bless us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. It is your power, God, that has kept us moving uh, forward all these years that we've been serving you. We faced obstacles, Lord. Uh, many times we might have even thought uh, of going back where we came from. Uh, but something within us, God, uh, told us you got to keep moving forward. Your testimony is going to help someone along the way. Your family is going to be blessed uh, because of the effort that you are making uh, to move forward. Uh, church, uh, let me tell you today uh, that our day of redemption is near. That the rapture of our church uh, is near. Near. It is to your benefit and to the benefit of your family for you to finish this race well. Heavenly Father, be with us today. Anoint my mind, my heart, and my lips, Lord. And let me bring forth this message that you have placed in my heart. I ask you this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated, giving God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It just, it's just so good to be able to be in the house of God. I don't know how long it's been for you to come back in the building, but it was a while for us. And even though it was okay to meet in the parking lot, and if it was okay that people got to hear the message, it isn't like being in the house of the Lord. There's nothing like it. It's nothing like it. It's kind of like, like reading the Bible. I know that we have all these apps. I know that we have all these ways and, and these reading plans and all these other stuff. But I still believe that the best way to read the Bible is in paper for you to open it up and go through Scripture. So coming back into the house of God is a tremendous, tremendous blessing. And as I mentioned earlier, I am blessed to be here. I almost feel at home. I was here yesterday, spoke in the small chapel, spoke here. I was, we spoke in the uh, Spanish service, and, and now I'm here. I think I'm going to come back next week. I don't know. You, you, you all have an awesome pastor. You have an awesome first lady. Yeah, give God some praise for the man of God. <laughs> pastor Ardias and myself, we, we, some, we can relate to a lot of things. but Because we come from the same lifestyle. Stuff he went through, stuff that he's going through, I've gone through, and I'm going through as well as many of you. Many of you have gone through all types of stuff in life, but you're still holding on. And, and that's why I wanted to speak on this topic about finishing well. Finishing well, so today's message isn't going to focus on, 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 on how or when you started your Christian walk. Because, you know, we celebrate it. We, I was baptized September 22nd, 1985. So when you add up all these numbers, I'm well into my 38th year of just, just serving God. And, and I thank God for it. But that's not real important. I'm not going to focus this, this message today on how many times you've fallen. How many times you've tripped and fell. I'm not even going to talk about how many times you've gotten up. I'm going to speak of how you are going to end this Christian walk that you are on today. How do you plan on ending your Christian walk? How, how, when, when you look at yourself, where do you see five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, if the Lord doesn't come in those years? Where do you see yourself? In every cemetery, there are tombstones. After someone dies and he's buried, they place a tombstone. And in that tombstone, there are two specific dates. You're going to find in these tombstones the date of the, when this person was born. And then you're going to see another date that will tell us when this person died. 
But between these two dates, uh, there is this little squiggly line. There's this little line there that tells us when he was born uh, and when he died. And, and, and I want you to, to know this because uh, that little line that is meaningless to a lot of people says a lot about where that individual is going to spend eternity. That little line is going to say a lot of where he's going to end when it's all said and done. And I want to tell you today that that little squiggly line says a lot of where you are going to spend eternity. Because what you did between those two dates will determine where you end up. And I know that maybe it isn't going to trigger too much in your life or it might not even change the way you are living. But at least I want to warn you. I want to give you this warning that that little squiggly line means a lot and you should take that into consideration. How? How do you intend to finish your Christian walk? Why do I ask this? Because one day, one day, your life here on earth is going to come to an end. One day, your life here on earth is going to come to an end. The Bible says that it's already established for man to die once and then be judged so as I mentioned in the Spanish service, go ahead and encourage your neighbor with these words. You're going to die. Sounds funny, but it's true. You're going to die. I'm going to die. We're all going to die unless we are taken up in the rapture before we die. But we are going to die. So let me ask you the second question. Knowing that you are going to die, how are you serving the Lord today? What is your relationship with Jesus Christ today? I know that we have visitors here today and the question is to you as well. What is your relationship with Jesus Christ today? And although this message is for the church because I want to wake you up and let you know that it is very important for you to stay connected to God. What is your service to God like? What is your commitment to God like? What is your life before God like? Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastics chapter 9 and verse 10 tells us something so true. Because right now you can do things. There are people in hospitals, uh, they can't use their arms anymore. They can't use their legs. Uh, they can't get off that bed. Uh, so this is what Solomon says. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Uh, for in the realm of the dead where you are going, there is neither working or planning or knowledge or wisdom. Hallelujah. So if you're going to praise, make it count. Praise God. If you're going to worship, make it count. Worship God. Because where you are going doesn't say because where you might go. Where it's possible that you might end up. It doesn't say that. It says where you're going. Which is the grave. Where you are going. In the realm of the dead. There is neither working. Wow. No overtime. No planning. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. There's a lot of planning going on. 
Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll give my life to Jesus. Tomorrow I'll go ahead and start this project. Tomorrow I'll get right with God. Uh, to, can you honestly say that you will be alive tomorrow? Whatever your hand finds to do today. Do it with all your might. Uh, do it with all your heart. Because where you are going... In the realm of the dead, there is no more working, no more planning, no more knowledge, and no more wisdom. So everyone who is in Christ, including myself, we have a before and we have an after. We have a past life. Huh? Do you remember your past life? You remember what it was like? Can I say that by the grace of God you're still alive today? Because God had another purpose, another purpose for your life. They didn't take your life. The drugs didn't take your life. The devil tried to kill you, but God kept you alive because there was a purpose for your life. We all have a before. You see me here today, but I have a past. I have a past. I have a before life. And we all have an after. We all have a before and we all have an after. So I'm going to go ahead and ask our brother to place the scripture found in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12 and 13. Because it's something, something very, very important of what Paul says here. And, I, and he says, remember that at that time. Remember that at that time. Time. I'm reading from the NIV, so it might show there a little bit different. But it says, remember, remember that at that time, before, before, before you knew Christ, before you accepted the gospel, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ. You were excluded from the citizenship in Israel. And you were foreigners to the covenant of the promise. You were in this world with Without hope and without God. If you are already in Christ, this was your past life. If you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are still living in that life. You were separate from Christ. Separate from Christ. Not only that, you were excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise. I don't know if you've ever been excluded uh, of something that you thought that you thought were part of and all of a sudden say, not you, brother. That's when we fail. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Can you imagine, Pastor Art, if, 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 only, if only gringos got saved. If only thin people got saved. If only. <laughs> Pastor says I'd be messed up. If only handsome people got saved. Richie. Where's Richie? Where would he be? We were excluded from the covenants of the promise. We were in the world. No, you know why we try to take our lives? Because we had no hope. Not, not only did people tell us that, that there was no hope for us. For some of us, our own parents told us there was no hope for you. You're a lost case. You're going to die in the streets. You, you're going to go ahead and OD. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. I don't know if someone can relate with me, but there was times when I got home, and I don't even know how I made it home. I was in this world without hope and without God. That was my before. But now verse 13 says the following. 
But now, but now in Christ, now in Christ Jesus, the blood of Christ has brought you once who were far away near. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the blood shedding on Calvary. I have been made near. I'm no longer a foreigner. I'm no longer a stranger. I'm no longer excluded. I can walk into the presence of God and enjoy His presence. A before and an after. We that are in Christ... His blood has brought us near. That sounds all good. Praise God. But, but I have to get real with you. I have to get real with you because the fact that you are here doesn't necessarily mean that that's where you're going to end. See, sometimes we get too comfortable here. You know, we've already achieved this, and we achieved that, and now we do this, and now we do that. And, and we think that we've got it all figured out. Uh, but let me tell you something. The devil doesn't sleep. If there was ever a time that you needed to stay connected to God is in times like these, when you have too much time in your hands. And so much access to things. A few months ago, one of the ministers in our church preached a message. And he spoke about how some people who were in Christ at once are no longer there. And those people that were bound to some type of chains, whether it be drugs, whether it be other stuff, that slowly began to be chained up again. And can I say this to you, Family Life Center? That it isn't God's fault if you are beginning to backslide. And it is not pastor's fault if you begin to backslide. It is your fault because you have not stayed connected to God. Look at what Paul says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Paul says this, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Stand firm then uh, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Being free in God uh, doesn't give you the freedom to sin. Uh, being free in God doesn't mean that you're always going to be saved. Uh, being free in God basically says that you are free to enjoy the blessings of God and to live in the freedom that God has given you. He says stand firm in the freedom in which God has set you free. He says, don't let yourselves, don't let yourselves, don't let yourself, your biggest enemy, it isn't the devil, it's yourself. I remember at men's camp, I preached a message entitled, guard this man. Guard this man. And it's not in my notes, but I, I want to share it with you. If you weren't at men's camp a couple years back, then you missed out. But I entitled the message, Guard This Man. And I spoke about how the Israelites, the king of Israel, had, had a war with, with, with the enemy. And they captured a man. And then they brought this man back to, to Israel's camp. And then he gave a man instructions. And he said, Guard this man. If this man gets away, his life will be for your life. And when I was speaking about that and, and thoughts, you know, not all the thoughts that I preach about come to mind. Sometimes I take them from someone else. But here, basically, what, what the preaching was about, that the man you need to guard the most is yourself. 
If that man gets away, it's going to destroy you. You got to guard that man because you have a before. That man is still alive. That man is still there. And if you feed it, it's going to take over your new life. Guard that man. Because that man doesn't want to go to church. That man does not want to pray. That man doesn't want to fast. That man wants to go ahead and do things that are not appropriate for a Christian. That man still there. But as long as you stay connected to God, uh, that man will be guarded. That man will never leave. Uh, and that's what Paul is saying. Do not let yourselves... Don't let yourself be burdened again. You remember that heavy load you carried along wherever you went? Huh. I was thinking about saying something, and I was fighting in my mind whether I should say it or not, but I'm going to say it. You know why so many of us cholos are hunchback? Because the burdens. <laughs> Is this water mine? Yeah? Okay. It wasn't because we had our hand in our pocket for so long. No, it was not that. It's the weight. Burden. Burden. And, and, and I know you remember your past life. I know you remember it because I remember it. And, you know, when I get too comfortable, and, and, and you know, I, I say this, you know, with humility and respectfully, you know, I thank God that, that God has chosen me to lead this district for, for these years that, that, that we are here. And, all, and it feels good being the bishop, and it feels good being a pastor, and it feels good. But, but I can't I can say that because I'm smart or because I'm wise or because I'm the holy. No, no, no. It is because of God's mercy that I am who I am today. And I give God all the praise and all the glory. And as long as I continue to serve him, he will get all the glory because I am who I am because of him. So Paul warns us and he says, don't allow yourself to be burdened again by yoke of slavery. Some people that started this walk with you and I are no longer with us. Some people that gave us studies are no longer with us. Some people that, that we thought, wow, what a speaker. Wow, what a man of God. What a woman of God. What voice, what talent are not with us anymore. They neglected their relationship with God. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6 says as follows. Because people backslide. I know you know someone that backslid. And it hurts us to see in the condition that they find themselves. And this was Paul. Paul was broken. And, and when he speaks here in chapter 1 and verse 6, he says, I am shocked. I am shocked that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ. And are, are turning to a different gospel. I am shocked, he says, that you are deserting so quickly. Oh, pastor, I've been serving the Lord for five years. Oh, whoopee. Ten years, 15 years, 20 years, uh, 30 years. Uh, that's nothing compared uh, to what is awaiting for you over in heaven. Uh, this is nothing. Oh, I'm shocked. I am shocked that you're deserting the one who called you. You are turning to a different gospel. You see, we spoke a little bit about Pastor Hernandez, David Hernandez. You know why your pastor is the pastor that he is? Because of men like David Hernandez. I am who I am because of men that pour themselves into me. 
And I will say it in, in, the, in, the, in the Spanish service because some of us that are here, we came to church in, a bad, in bad shape. We came to church, uh, you know, we lied, we stole. We, we, I was amazed when I was the East Los Angeles District Treasurer for eight years because I was a thief. Before, yeah, of course, before. <laughs> was, was. And trust in me. <laughs> with, with the district's finances and, 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 and how God changes. Now, now, you know, before you would be afraid of them finding out. I don't care if people find out who I am. I am more afraid of he who sees all. That is why I need to walk very carefully. Because sooner or later I'm going to stand before him and give account. Paul says, I am shocked that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you. Some of us that are in church today needed the type of discipline that they gave us. I'm serious. Because if I would have went to another church that everything was permissible because one saved, always saved. And, and if you want to smoke, as long as you don't go ahead and smoke too much, then you're fine. Or if you drank a little bit, as long as you don't get drunk, then you're still going to go to heaven. It's okay to get high. If I would have went to one of those churches, I would not be here today. I thank God for the apostolic assembly of the faith in Christ Jesus uh, that preaches a solid message. I needed someone to tell me, you can't do that. You can't dress that way. You better get away from that music. You better stop going to those places. Because every time you step into those places, you're endangering your salvation. They were hard on us. Remember that? They were hard. I remember when I was dating my wife. I didn't know anything about you can't hold hands. And you needed a chaperone? I don't know none of that stuff. I used to think, ¿Qué piensan? I'm a Christian. <laughs> and I remember one year I took my wife. We were married at the time, but we went. She was going to stay at, at, uh, at, at youth camp. And we went up to, I think it was uh, I, I'm maybe Pinecrest or maybe even Camp Sealy. I don't know, we went, and, and we were saying goodbye. Nothing, nothing, you know, that what happens today, but we were saying goodbye. And I remember the pastor of that camp yelled out and said, hey, you can't stay here. I'm just saying goodbye. Well, goodbye. Get on your way. But I needed that type of discipline. I needed that type of counsel. And because I held and I stood firm firm in, in the things that I was taught, blessed be the name of Jesus, I am the bishop of the East Los Angeles district because God will honor those uh, that are faithful. If you are faithful in the small things, God will place you in greater things. So Paul is shocked. You started off so good and look at you now. Galatians chapter 5 verse 7, Paul says this, you were running a good race or you were doing so well. Man, there was potential, there was, you were on fire for God and then he goes, who cut it on you to keep you from obeying the truth? What happened? What are you were doing so good? I, sometimes I'm shocked because I, I see how people, you know, try to serve God and, and, and what they're doing. And, and in my mind as a human being, wow, wow, you did this man has a calling. And, and you go, but, but you just go ahead and maybe wait a little bit longer because God has something to show you before you know that they're no longer in church. And then you wonder what's going on, what happened? You know what happened? There was no true conversion. They didn't stay connected to God. It was doing, you were doing so well. Who? What? 
cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth. What, what happened? Oh, because there's no love here. I'm going to go to the other church. Oh, because, because nobody takes me into account or they don't let me do this or they don't let me do that. I'm going to go to the other church and, and because everything is permissible over there. Remember what Paul said, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Yes, you can. You do whatever you want. But not everything is beneficial. So Paul is wondering, what happened? You were doing so well. So many people have, have, have stepped into my office or maybe someone in the parking lot or somewhere else just to tell me, you know what, I backslid. You know what, I gave into temptation. You know what, this is what happened. And, you know, and it just crushes me because I thought that they were doing so well. This is what Paul is saying, what happened? Then he takes it to the next level in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. And he says, you foolish Galatians, who has fascinated you? Who has fascinated, who patted you in the back telling you that everything was okay, even when they knew you were sinning? Who told you it was going to be okay as long as you didn't go too far? Who told you that? Who fascinated you? He says, before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. That you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard. Now, now, now let, me, let, me, let me take a few minutes or a few seconds on this. You know, you know yourself. I know myself. So, is your conversion real? Is your relationship with God real? I hope I don't have to ask pastor what he thinks. Because you should know where you are. Is your transformation, is your experience with God real? Because based on how you live for him will tell the world how real your conversion is. How real your relationship with God is. I don't need to ask anybody what God called me for. If God is who called me to this work, he's going to tell me what I need to be doing. Let me share something with you. Going back to men's camp. Because a lot of things happen in men's camp. Those of you that haven't gone, go. When they allow us to go back. But I remember there, there was a time when there was, you know, a few pastors. We were all, you know, talking about miracles that we've seen. We're all together. You might have even been part of our talk, Pastor Art. And, and we're there and we're talking and we're asking this pastor, what's the biggest miracle you've seen? Well, I've seen, you know, a, a, a lame people come and he start walking. You know, well, I heard, you know, I, I was able to see that, 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 uh, that a mute was able to speak, a deaf was able to hear. Um, you know, and, and they started talking about miracles. And, and, and then they said, what about you, Pastor Jesse? What's the biggest miracle you've seen? I said, well, I've never seen a blind man see and I've never seen, you know, someone's hand grow. So I said, the biggest miracle that I've seen is the miracle that God has done in my life. No one needs to tell me if God touched my life or not. I know if he touched my life or not. No one needs to know. No one needs to say, wow, you look different. I am different uh, because my conversion and my transformation was no one needs it. My biggest miracle isn't to see somebody walk or someone see. The biggest miracle is me. The biggest miracle is you because you're not the same person. You say you don't have a testimony. Look at yourself. Look at what you think now. Look at what you say now. Look at the way you live now. God did a miracle. It was only a miracle that could save you. 
because you were a lost case. I was a lost case, no hope, no God. We were going to die. I didn't know if I was going to make it a 30. I didn't know if I was going to get married, if I was going to have a family. None of that that I know. But God knew and blessed be, the, blessed be the name of Jesus that his promises are true and his call for me has been fulfilled. So this is what Paul is saying. Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. He says, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? And then he goes on to say in verse 3, Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. Are you so foolish? Are you so blind? Are you really that naive? That after beginning by the means of the Spirit. You are now trying to finish by the means of the flesh. Are you really kind of like this? Are you really that dumb? Are you really that dumb that you are willing to trade spiritual things for, for, for carnal things? Hey, and believe it or not, people are willing to do that. They're willing to trade their salvation for a bowl of lentils. They're willing to trade their salvation for just a fix, for just a feel-good moment. Uh, and this is what, are you that dumb uh, that you are trading the blessings of God for the curses of this world? Are you really that foolish? I wish people that are no longer serving God would have heard something like this. Maybe we could have convinced them to stay. Look at the friends. Look at family members. Look at the people that started walking in the Lord with you. Look at their lives today. Did they gain anything? Are they happier? Are they more fulfilled? No. Nope. Maybe they got a good job and they got money, but they don't got what you got. And what you got is something that money cannot buy. You can't buy peace. You can't buy joy. You can't buy a home. You'll buy a house. You won't buy a home. You cannot buy a marriage like yours. Only God can do such things. Somebody give God some praise because it is better to finish in the spirit than in the flesh. And then he goes on to say, have you experienced so much in vain? If it really was in vain. Have you really sacrificed that much to just leave it all behind? I mean, the majority of us that are here had our struggles. We've had our struggles. You know, we, we've had our moments of, well, may, maybe I, I, I can go back. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe, I think I'm going to be speaking to somebody. Maybe if I contact the number that I had uh, in the past, and see, just to see how they're doing. And the, the devil begins to reel you in. Uh, and maybe look at, let me look at their Facebook profile. Maybe, let me look at this and let me look at that. Uh, hallelujah. And, 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 and then you fight it and you fight it and, and you come back to the altar and you come back to God. And then when, maybe you left the church uh, and now you're just making your way back uh, and you sacrificed and, and the gossip and you, and you experience the rejection. Uh, and, and, and then all of a sudden, it, it, it overwhelms you. And you go back and Paul is saying, did you really sacrifice that much in vain? All of your struggles, was that in vain? All of your tears that you've shed, is that in vain? The hours and hours of you crying out to God to heal you, was that in vain? The moments that you just cried out to God because you couldn't sleep, you couldn't find peace, and finally He gave that to you, but not for not not freely because you had to pay a price. Was all that in vain? That now you are you are you are willing to trade all of that.
You started in the spirit. Now you're going to finish in the flesh. What about all the stuff you've gone through? Again, some of us are here by God's mercy. <laughs> Man, because we had our, we didn't have our struggle so much with the world, with the hermanos at times. Eh. Has anybody here ever struggled with the hermano, with an hermano? Face the camera that way. Struggle. Oh, God. I didn't think there were hermanos like that, but they are. Give me, give me, give me, give me strength. But we're still here. <laughs> still here. Moving forward. Have dreams. Have hopes. Again, I'm going to say this. The fact that you are here doesn't necessarily mean that that's where you're going to end. You know why? Because every day that passes, every day that passes, your salvation is at risk. There is a devil. And he's after you. And he's, he knows more about you than you think. So every day that passes, you risk your salvation. And if you've been playing around, sooner or later, you're going to be exposed. You're going to think that just because you've been delivered all these times, that God is going to deliver you this last time. And you're not even going to know, but God is not going to be there anymore. That's what Samson thought. I'm going to go ahead and get away just like the previous times. Maybe he even thought this is the last time I played with God. And the Bible says, but what he did not know is that God had already left him. God had already left him. So let's hold on to God. We are living in difficult times. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We are living in difficult times. So Paul's warning to you and I is this. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 and 16. He says, be very careful then how you live. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise. But as wise. Careful how you live. Whenever I'm, 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 you want me to stop, bring the keep piano player up here, okay? Because I still have a lot to say. Is that okay? You know, I, I'm not concerned about you staying because you're, 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 you're soldiers and, you're, yeah, we're going to go ahead and tough it out. I'm more concerned about the battery going out on that phone. That the world's not going to hear this. Paul says, be very careful. And same thing pastor tells you. Same thing pastor, be careful. You're working too much. You're neglecting your marriage. You're neglecting your family. Careful, you're getting too close there. Careful, you're, you're stepping on, 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 on dangerous ground. And careful, and that's what he's telling you. Be careful then how you live. Be careful what you allow into your house. Be careful what places you go. Be careful where you click when you're on the internet. Be careful. Live as, as wise and not as unwise. And he says, making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. Can we see this pandemic not so much for what the evil that is doing, but see it as an opportunity to get closer to God? This is an opportunity. If you got laid off, you're getting unemployment. Who's going to pay you to stay home and pray? Oh, pastor, I can't fast because I work construction. You got laid off. Start fasting. Read the word. Memorize the word. Then you'll be planted as a tree planted by the side of rivers. 
You will grow in God. Use your time wisely. Paul says, we are in a race. We are on a you gotta look, you gotta look, you gotta look at your Christian walk as a race. And you gotta look at us as if a ton of people are running. And this is what he says in Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Don't you know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training. If I could change those words, I would say, everyone who competes will be baptized in Jesus' name and become a member of the apostolic assembly. Goes into strict training. They do it. These runners do it to get a crown that will perish. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. <laughs> Somebody didn't get excited for that. but And then Paul says, therefore, therefore, I don't run like someone running aimlessly. I don't fight like a boxer beating the air. He says, no, I don't do any of those things. I strike a blow to my own body and I make it a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified or I myself will not be eliminated for the price. I beat myself. No one needs to tell me what I have to do. I do it on my own. I don't need to wait for pastor to call on a 21-day fast. I'll take it upon myself. I don't need pastor to invite me to prayer. I'm going to take myself to prayer. I beat myself. My biggest enemy is myself. I strike myself, myself. Again, your biggest enemy is you. You. If you are losing this battle, it's because you've allowed it. If you've gave up, it's because you gave up. God hasn't given up on you. You gave up on you. Because when God called you, he called you to, to overcome. God called you to make it to the finish line. God called you to finish well. If you're not finishing well, it's not on God, it's on you. Someone said this. You know, because when they go through a trial, when they go through something, they say, I almost threw in the towel. Have you heard that expression? I almost threw in the towel, the white towel. I almost threw it in. I couldn't go anymore. Did you know? Have you ever seen a boxer in the ring with the, with the towel? If he's holding on to the towel, then he can't box. You know who's got the towel? His trainer. And when the trainer thinks that his boxer had enough, he throws in the towel. Not, not the boxer. Guess who's holding your towel? Guess who put you in that ring? Guess who trained you? It was Jesus, and Jesus has never lost a, a battle. He's never lost a fight. He's not about to throw in the towel. You know why? Because he trained you, and greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. He will never throw in the towel for you. If you throw in the towel because you gave up. And you became that boxer that said, no mas. No more. But not God. God knows what you're made of. God knows that you can not only take on that, uh, on, on that fight, but you can take on another one. And that fight is going to help you to overcome the other one. God knows it. And when he's done with you, he's going to take you home. When he's done with me, he's going to take me home. So while I'm here, I'm going to keep on chucking along. 
I'm going to keep on running because I am going by the grace of God. And by God's help, I will finish my race well. So I'll conclude with this. Paul said, I consider my life worth nothing. You know, he says, I've gone through a lot, Paul says. He says, I know what it is to be in need. He says, I know what it is to have plenty. I know what it is to eat and I know what it's like to be hungry. He says, I have learned. I have learned. All these things have taught me something. He says, I have learned the secret of being happy. And my happiness doesn't rest on when I have or when I don't have it. They, they, they don't rest on, on, on my house or, or on my bank account. No, because I already know that none of that stuff can fulfill the emptiness in my heart. I have learned the secret of being content, of being fulfilled. Because I have been trained in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living or in plenty, or in want, whatever. I, you know why? Because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can make it. If God is in me, I can make it. Consider my life worth nothing. I have... I've already placed two goals in my life, it says. One is to finish well. And the other is to fulfill my calling. Fulfill my calling. I want to go ahead and fulfill the calling that God has given me. Remember this, church. What you and I want to hear when we meet our Savior is this well done well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful with a few things I will put you in charge of many things and then he'll say come and share your master's happiness God bless you we love you keep moving forward Finish well. Bless it. Amen. God bless our bishop. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How will you finish your race? I want to finish my race. I want to finish it well. Would you please stand with me today? Amen. I need the praise team to help me out and begin to worship the Lord and take us into the presence of God. Amen. I tell the church all the time. I think I just mentioned the lifeline on Thursday. Amen. I, I've seen a lot of people start this race with me. He se les acabó el gas. They started to run this race with me. They're no longer here. Amen. I don't. And I tell people all the time: pace yourself. Don't burn out. Pace yourself. You start running. Keep on running and pace yourself. You don't have to go 100 miles an hour. Pace yourself. Just make sure you have enough, amen, to finish the race that you're in today. Can somebody say amen? As our praise team begins to work and starts to worship and praise the name of the Lord, amen. At this time, we're going to lift up our hands. We're going to close our eyes. Hallelujah. We're going to pray unto the Lord right now in Jesus' name. God Almighty, hallelujah, we're here today. Only by your mercy, your grace, and by faith. Faith in you, Almighty God. Almighty God, we're here today. God Almighty, because we need, hallelujah, to finish what we have begun, this this race that we are in, God Almighty. And I don't want to run real fast. I don't need to be the first one, hallelujah, amen, through that finish line. All I got to do is just make sure that I finish. I need to finish my my race, but I also need to, hallelujah, fulfill my calling. I haven't.
been witnessing to nobody. I don't share my faith with nobody. I gotta start to share. Don't use an excuse. Amen. That I have to wear a mask. So what? Tell people about Jesus Christ. Tell them where God has brought you from. What God has done in your life.